Hello and welcome. This is the tutorial for how to use XCard. Next option down is summary. Now summary is general backend information, uh, pretty much what you saw on the main page when you logged in, what shipping methods you have enabled, and we're going to modify that. Right now it's giving us a little warning saying we have no shipping rates defined because we have real-time shipping calculation enabled, but we don't have any services hooked up to it. So we're going to have to fix that. Shows our version of our X card. Right now the current version is 4.2.2. 4.2.3 is in beta right now, so that will be released momentarily. And you want to make sure you stay up on your X card updates. If you have a heavily modified X card, you will need to have that X card custom updated because there's a lot of stuff in there that will go wrong if you just try to update it yourself. It's never a good scene. So you want to make sure you have that down by a professional. And then you have down here a directory. It shows all your files and the status. That's basically all of your writable files to make the X card work. Now let's scroll back up and go to the next spot, which is database backup slash restore. This is where you want to make periodic backups of your data. Now this only backs up the database. This does not back up your web files. And I'm going to show you how to do that. If you want to back up the database, you can either check the checkbox and it'll write it on the server, which we don't recommend doing because we want it. That's sensitive information. You have credit cards and all kinds of stuff. So we don't want to store that information on the server. We want to just click the button and it'll start downloading automatically to your computer. Take that file, burn it to a disk along with your other backup, and you'll be better off in case whatever happens because you never know. Life's funny like that. Let me show you now how you're going to go ahead and back that up through your cPanel. Now we recommend minimum doing this once every six months, if not a year. If you have a heavy traffic site, you want to do this more like once every month, if not quicker. We scroll down here to backups. And obviously I have the options of downloading a full backup, which you really don't need and that'll just take a lot of extra time. It has all of your mail, all of everything. Uh, if you want to really download all of your mail and you're not downloading your mail using a email client, if you're using webmail, do a full backup. So what we want to do for general backups, say you're going to do a monthly backup, here are partial backups. Download a home directory backup. This is everything that when you first log in to your FTP, all your directories that are in that, that's your home directory. So all the files in there, including your web root, which is your public HTML folder, is going to be backed up and stored on your local computer. So we click here, and then it'll start downloading. And then if you scroll down, you'll see all different types of databases. And all you got to do is just click on a database link, and it'll start downloading a link to that database, which is, again, the same thing as using the generate SQL function. We like doing it directly through Xcart because, say, you have to re-import the data, doing it with this method is a lot more reliable when you need to put the data back in. Import and export. This is where you can import and export data in and out of XCart. Now we're going to cover this in a separate tutorial because it is pretty detailed. So this is more for importing either products or you want to export customer information or even your newsletter list. So we also next have membership levels which is where we can define wholesale premium users or even in admin levels, which is fulfillment staff, people that don't have access to modify contents of the site, but we want them to be able to check orders and moderate the orders. Next, we have credit card types. And basically, this is all the default types that come standard with XCard. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the ones that I don't think we're going to use. So let's go ahead and get rid of all those and click Delete Selected. Now we have Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover, the major four. Okay, those are the credit cards. Now we go here to Titles. We have Mr., Mrs., and Miss. Now say we want to add Doctor, position of four. because so we have one, two, three. We'll have Doctor be the fourth. And say you get Sir Ian McKellen visiting you. So we'll put Sir, put a five. And that is how you add titles. And this is used for all the forms, of course. Next, we have edit templates. Now, this area 
if you don't know what you're doing I would stay out of here because these are the templates that make up your website now only reason we give you access to this is eventually if you want to learn you can go ahead and do it through this system now it's not a hundred percent that you won't break something and it's good to make a backup of your site before you modify anything in case you need to revert anything back so say you wanted to make a change to your header well right here I have a head.tpl file and you know if I'm not sure exactly what file I need to click on and you're new to the templates you want to take a look at webmaster mode now what webmaster mode will do is it'll show you the website in a special little window let's go ahead and open up the customer area in a new window and we're gonna go ahead and see what we see we're blocking pop-up windows so let's turn that off because we need to make sure we have our little key that's gonna pop up here well, here it is the debugging console and when I mouse over this you'll see over here it'll mouse over the different areas so I'm gonna be like okay where is this part of the site alright well let's see there we go so this is home main uh, we want to actually look at welcome that's welcome.tpl and that's where it's centered so we click on that and it'll take us directly to the template where we can modify any of the content for the welcome page or the home page now let's go ahead and close that and we'll discuss that further in a later tutorial but I just wanted to give you a little taste of what that is all about next is files now the files area is where you can store well files and you can store images you can store digital downloads uh, right now we're gonna create a new directory we're gonna call it images and this can be for product images or headers and so on and so forth and then click on that and inside of here we can upload images directly from the screen right here or you can use your FTP and inside your FTP it's essentially public underscore HTML or www and then forward slash files or if you're accessing it via the web it'll be yourwebsite.com forward slash files but you can't access files directly unless we turn off the HT access which prevents unauthorized access for security reasons because if sometimes you put any special files back there you only want them accessible via the system and you don't want people to freely go back there and what's called leeching where they can take that URL send it to all their friends and everyone's downloading your music for free we don't want that the system protects it now the next option down the list is general settings now general settings is pretty deep we have a lot of different stuff here we start with our main general settings which these are basically options to turn off and on anonymous checkout or you want people to sign up for a specific membership level or you want to redirect the customer to the cart say they go uh, they go somewhere they shouldn't be and it redirects them to the cart redirect them to the dynamic part of the store if the uh, they're using the HTML catalog which is another feature of Xcart and it's typically used for search engines scrolling down we have default uh, country default zip code we got California set in there as our state and our default city as Los Angeles or whatever your default city is and one of the options is when a customer isn't logged in it is presumed that he or she is from the default country so when we check this it'll go ahead and automatically say the default country is United States so we're gonna autofill this information in and the user can go ahead and change that now down here the primary currency symbol obviously the dollar sign display format it's right now currently in US but if you uh, for our catering to a different market or we are developing a site for out of the country we would modify that and then in here we would put our alternative currency symbol which is usually in HTML next you have all the rest of the fun little information I'm just gonna skip past most of this uh, minimum allowed order subtotal so 10 is the minimum order allowed we're gonna put this at one so it's gonna be one dollar and then we can either disable inventory tracking where the system will not keep track of your inventory right now when you create a product you can set what that product level is going to be set at and you can also disable products when they are out of stock so if you run out of a product and you don't plan on carrying it again you can turn that off or just hide it so you don't sell anything that you can't produce immediately off the shelf 
And then do not ask customers for credit card information while getting registered. Yeah, we don't ask them for that when they're getting registered. That's a little presumptuous. Uh, we can leave all this as it is. Smarty tags, you can leave that alone unless that's already checked. Uh, if it's already checked, make sure you keep it checked because your website was built with that feature. And then click save after you've made your changes. The other options, appearance options. Go ahead and scroll here. You can see we can assign the products per page and products have a per page in admin. So when you're doing searches for your stuff, you can view more and maximum navigation pages and so on and so forth. Uh, I'll go ahead and go over the rest of this in another tutorial. But for now, I just want to give you a little taste of what is involved with that. Uh, one other feature I want to mention is the SEO options. Now the new Xcart features rewritable SEO URLs, which will basically take your URLs, change them into something that the search engines very much appreciate and helps categorize your site. So if you have this turned on, you are very happy because you're getting more traffic than you normally would. Now leave all this at default and then enter your meta description and keywords and then how you want it formatted on the header of the website. Now let's move on to images location. This typically is used only during setup. I would go ahead and leave this area alone. You're not going to use it. You're not going to need it. Again here uh, we go to languages. Now languages is essentially where you modify any text within the website. So we're going to go ahead and select our language. Currently in this system we have only English installed. So we select English and then I'm going to type in something that is essentially on my website but I want to change. Like um, on the contact page there's a section that says form below. I know that from doing this many times. You can send us a message using the form below. Contact us header. So in the apply filter you type what you're looking for and it'll show you. If I want to minimize that search I can select the topic on the left and say I only want to search inside text or labels or maybe modules. So if I search only text, now it shows me only the text variables. So you start with txt and say you want to create your own variable. Well, if, if you feel comfortable enough, uh, text variables start with txt underscore and then variable name. It can't be something that's already taken. Uh, if you put something in there that's already taken, it might overwrite it and that's not good. So we're going to go ahead and create a custom one and they can't start with numbers. So that's just standard programming. So you can put uh, my label and you can put numbers in it, but do it at the very end or in mix with it. And then whatever the label is going to consist of. So this is my custom label. And then you would simply click add. And then when you put that on a website, you're going to mark that and I'll just do it within this box so I can show you. And that is how you would display that label inside of Smarty. So that is languages. Let's move on. We've already seen webmaster mode. Modules, this is where you can turn off and on the default modules or the add-on modules for your site. Um, typically, if you're not using it, leave it turned off. It uh, creates problems uh, if you have something turned on and it's not configured properly. So we can turn off and on bestsellers, advanced statistics, if you're going to use bestsellers, advanced statistics needs to be turned on. It has a little note right here. Customer reviews, detailed product images. Now we would want that because we want people to click to enlarge to view more detail of product. Discount coupons. We can use that inside of our newsletters to help drive additional recurring traffic. E-goods. That's for digital downloads if you're going to have downloadable products. Extra fields. That is essentially if you're going to create extra fields for when you're entering products, you can have little fields that are already there. So say if you have a computer company and you want to already list fields for the RAM, memory, hard drive, and so on and so forth, you can do that with that module turned on. Fast lane checkout. Typically we like to turn this off. It's kind of a cool feature, but you know some people like it where it's just a single simple page. You don't have to change the whole look of the website. but.